Okay. Um, by the way of introductions, as I said, my name is Peter Gillespie, the Planning and Economic Development Director, and, and co-hosting the meeting tonight with me and doing the lion's share of the work uh, on the various designs is town engineer Derek Greger. A little brief history lesson here. Uh, the projects that we're going to talk about tonight uh, were primarily generated by the work uh, that we did when we adopted the old Weathersfield master plan some years ago. That report uh, was uh, has been implemented over the, the intervening years. Uh, the plan recommended a series of intersection improvements. Uh, it identified some pedestrian improvements that we needed to make. Uh, it had the message that we wanted to try and slow down traffic primarily on Main Street. And it also recommended some specific uh, pedestrian amenities. So that's the basis uh, of uh, some of these recommendations tonight. Uh, the specific grant that we received from the Connecticut Department of Tra Transportation, it goes all the way back to 2017 when we submitted the grant application. Uh, we were awarded the grant about a year after that in August of 2018. Uh, in January of 2019, uh, the funding commitment was made. We received nearly $400,000 to fund these various projects. Uh, after the funding uh, commitment was made, uh, we were required to do some uh, permitting with uh, the DEP uh, in terms of uh, flood, uh, flood management as some of the improvements are in flood zones. And we, were, we are also required to take a look at some potential archeological impacts, which we are uh, going to be doing as well. We had an initial October 2019 public information meeting. And since that time, uh, we have been designing uh, the improvements based on some of those public comments back in 2019. Uh, Derek Greger, the town engineer, will be describing uh, the 10 projects that will be funded under the program. Uh, the first project are improvements at the intersection of Main Street and Hartford Avenue. The second project is uh, improvements proposed at the intersection of Maine and State. Third project are a series of improvements uh, uh, that are targeted for the intersection of Knott Street and Garden Street, and also Garden Street along uh, the side of Standish Park. Number four, uh, we're proposing to stripe Main Street for a uh, bike lane to support the Heritage Way bike path. Number five, we've got some crosswalks proposed uh, in the 200 to 212 Main Street block across from the Keeney Center and the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. Uh, number six, we've got some improvements proposed uh, at Main Church and Marsh Street intersection. Number seven, uh, there's a uh, proposed uh, additional crosswalk on Marsh Street. Number eight, there's some improvements uh, down uh, in, in Cove Park. Uh, at the end of Hamner Road and near the Cove Park Warehouse. Number nine, there are some improvements uh, proposed at the intersection of Main and Center Street. And then lastly, there's some funding in the program to add uh, bicycle parking at a, num a number of locations uh, in Old Weathersfield. At this point, I'm going to let um, town engineer Derek Gregor uh, jump in here with specific slides that follow this same format. Uh, at this point, we'll get into some of the details of the individual projects. I think you'll see that there are um, illustrations that show what the existing conditions are and what the proposed conditions uh, are intended to be. And as I said at the beginning, uh, we will give an opportunity at the end of each one of the presentations for anyone who has specific comments about those improvements. So Derek, I'll hand it off to you now. Thank you, Peter. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as Peter said, my name is Derek Greger. I'm the town engineer. I am going to go through some uh, plans tonight. Uh, like you said, we do have some existing conditions. I just want to talk briefly about um, what some of the issues are that we're aware of at some of these locations and then show you a plan with some proposed improvements. Um, just keep in mind, these are still preliminary design plans. Um, they are much further along than when we, last time we had a public information meeting, they were very conceptual. 
um, but they are still subject to change. That's the purpose of tonight's meeting, really, to, to answer questions and solicit some feedback from the public um, so we have a better project going forward and we can, we can look at what can be incorporated into the project or change at this point. So what you see on the screen now is the uh, first intersection we were going to talk about. This is Main Street and Hartford Avenue. Um, north is to the right. So Cove, the Cove is north to the right on the screen here. What you see highlighted in darker gray is the road limits as they are now. Uh, lighter gray are the sidewalk uh, connections that are out there now. As you can see, this is, uh, you've been through this, a very wide intersection, has uh, three approaches. Only two of them have stop signs, so the northbound direction currently doesn't have a stop, um, which can be confusing for pedestrians and confusing for drivers. Um, there's limited parking spaces in this area of uh, Main Street, and there's a pretty long pedestrian crossing uh, across Main Street that extends across the whole width of the intersection. So we're looking uh, to make some improvements. I'll show you another plan. So this is the same, you see the dark, it shows, uh, the dark gray shows the uh, proposed road limits. And what we're looking at doing, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, starting with the intersection here is to try and tighten up the intersection a little bit more, uh, tighten up by pushing out the curb radius on each of the corners, um, the two Western corners and also along the east side of the road. So what you see in green shading is what is currently pavement and would become lawn area. What you see in yellow is uh, proposed either concrete sidewalk or brick paver sidewalks. And the gray is what the existing is. So as you can see with this, um, one of the things we're looking to do is, uh, what we're looking at is putting a stop in the northbound direction. Um, that way we'd have a little less confusion. Everybody's got to come to a stop. Um, with that, we have added a uh, crossing, pedestrian crossing on the south side of the intersection as well with some connections, uh, with a connection to the existing sidewalk system. This, uh, these bump outs and some of the geometry changes reduces uh, the crossing distances uh, quite, quite a bit, mostly on Main Street, a little bit on Hartford Avenue. Um, we have some, uh, let's see, we have uh, angled parking spaces we were looking at just north of the intersection. So on the west side of the road here, you could see, um, from here to about this point, this is where the existing curb is near the catch basin. That's right here. So we're looking at potentially adding another four parking spaces extending to the north. On the opposite side of the road, right now we have uh, the edge of road is, is out here where my cursor is, that's the curb line. We have parallel parking out there. Um, it's not striped, it's just available for people. So. With this, we're, we were looking at uh, nose-in parking, similar to what we have on the opposite side of the street from the intersection going north uh, to the driveway to the church here. So that requires us to widen the road uh, anywhere from two to about uh, 10 feet in this area. Moving south, uh, we also were looking at adding some parking spaces on the west and east side. Right here, uh, we can add two spaces potentially here we're looking at four on the east side and one extra space uh, you know, could be constructed here. With the improvements, it uh, wasn't originally part of our application, but um, you know, in looking at this, Peter and I had decided it would be best to put a crosswalk in here, maybe uh, in front of uh, Comstock Ferry because there's a lot of parking over here. People tend to walk across the street just about anywhere. So we're looking at a bump out of the road here um, this curb line that cost us a couple parking spaces. On this side of the road, we're looking at another grass bump out here, and that's kind of where the existing striping is. So we don't lose any parking from that. So with these improvements, um, we net, I, I remember correctly, I think we net about 17 more parking spaces than currently exist now. Um, this is a little bit different. The original plan was just calling for uh, moving this curb line in, but leaving parallel parking. So with some of the parking difficulties we have down here, we were looking at trying to put more parking right along the road. We are trying to incorporate some uh, low impact development measures. This could be a, a rain garden, which could take stormwater, let it infiltrate, have some plantings in there, and then have it overflow into the catch basin into the rest of the drainage system. So that's something that the town is part of our uh, DEP 
um, MS4 permit or stormwater permit needs to needs to look at doing when we can, um, as well as reducing uh, the amount of per, uh, impervious area that we have that generates a lot of runoff. So in general, that's kind of an overview of what we're doing here. Um, as Peter said, I'll just open it up to comments or questions now. If anyone wants to uh, interject, now would be a good time. I don't, I'm not sure. How do we indicate that we want to speak? Uh, I think the group's probably small enough. You could just, uh, you could go ahead, Ms. McCoo. Okay. I mean, this, this all looks great. And thank you so much for including um, the, the additional parking spaces and an effort to sort of soften that intersection and slow the traffic down a little bit. Um, so, I mean, overall, I think it looks great. The only thing I would say is, and I don't know that there is an answer to this, but the way the sidewalk is set up on like where most of the businesses are and the way that the pedestrians sort of tend to go is that everybody wants to cross the road where the sidewalk crosses Hartford Avenue. And it's sort of like counterintuitive to turn to the right or the left and cross at that crosswalk. You know, typically the crosswalk would flow with the sidewalk. Um, I'm sure you'll have better, more accurate words to describe what I'm saying. I'm sure there's technical words for this. So I, I don't know. So then what you hap happen is people just cross and don't use the sidewalk because it kind of doesn't make much sense, but did you have any ideas about what to do about that or we're just sort of stuck with it? Uh, yes, that, that is a challenge along Main Street because of the fact that right away is so wide and the, the walks are so far off the road. Um, obviously from a safety perspective, as you can imagine, trying to cross here is, is not the safest place to do that. Um, some thoughts we had, and that's something, you know, we're open to different ideas. I had noted up here landscaping and sign and grass shelf to prevent pedestrian crossings. Maybe prevent's not the right word, but to uh, discourage, I guess, maybe would be better. Um, we've talked about some things, man, you know, we could do like a little landscape bed with some mulch or some kind of um, maybe some kind of like stone monuments or, or something in this path that would encourage people to follow, follow the sidewalks. It's not ideal. Um, but what we're proposing is the safest way to cross. So there might be some ways if, you know, thinking if there's, if there's mulch in a planting bed, people might not, people will, but most people probably won't go right through it. They'll, they'll yeah. walk around. We are trying to, if you see the light, lighter gray crosswalk here, that's the existing crosswalk. So I am trying to keep the crosswalk as far uh, or as close to the sidewalks um, west here as possible. So I mean, it's shifting in maybe about seven or eight feet, a little bit closer than it exists right now. Um, but I'm limited on how far back I can go because I want to make sure we maintain adequate sight lines when we have parking over in this area that people stopped at the stop sign on Hartford Avenue, you know, can see they're not too far back. So that, that's, you know, that's something we we're looking at. And that's a good point. Yeah, no, I like the idea of some like a raised flower bed or something or a raised little landscaping island. I think that would look really nice and that would help direct people to the correct uh, uh, way to go. So I think this looks great. Good, good job. Thank you. Aaron, I do think that it is going to be a safer area for people to cross at that point because there's going to be a, a three-way stop now. Um, is there, uh, there's already two crosswalks on Main Street. Would there be any um, permission to have another crosswalk where the sidewalks end? Are you, are you talking about in, in Hartford Avenue where the sidewalks end? on Hartford Avenue, because I, I know kids are not going to go around the corner to cross the street. I know they're not. So nope. um, if, if there was a crosswalk, then the traffic would have to stop for the kids. Um, but why do we have two crosswalks on, on Main Street? Well, we're providing a second one just because we are providing the, uh, the third stop sign here with this plan. So it would allow for a crossing here if someone is on 
you know, the south side of the road. It's not necessarily it has to be there, just something we thought while we're doing all the improvements, we could put another crosswalk here. That's to, not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking oh. about the one on the north side, uh, the, the right there. Yeah. This one? And what would you like to do? Uh, is that going to stay? Well, the, oh, yeah. Okay. So the, the, the dark gray here, or the, I should say the, yeah, the dark gray color is the existing. The, the oh, okay. black is what we're looking at for proposed. Okay. okay. So yes, it will stay on that. It'll stay on this side and on the south that's, side. We'll that's add, good. That's um, good. But you, I'm you, thinking that maybe having an additional crosswalk at the uh, entry points to the sidewalks. Okay. I mean, to your point, uh, as you stated, I think this is going to be a problem. There's really not a lot we can do to, to design it away other than putting up some kind of obstructions that discourage people from crossing here. This is just not a safe place to cross, which is why we don't want to put a crosswalk there. A couple of reasons. One is it's in the middle of the queue when traffic comes up to the stop bar here. They'd be walking through the center of, of vehicles. And then also vehicles that are taking the right here are coming around the corner right into a a crossing, which is not ideal. It's best to have them at better visibility at the intersection itself, which is wh why they're typically um, kind of where I'm showing them, closer to the intersection for, for viewing. So maybe we can come up with something, um, maybe if it's in small shrubs or, or something to that effect in the, these areas to, to discourage it to the extent we can. I mean, it's occurring now. It probably will occur after this, but we're trying to make it as easy as possible and, and have people you know get across the road safely. Derek, I'm thrilled to see the uh, stop sign on Main Street. I, I mean, I, I live on Hartford Avenue, so I travel this intersection all the time. And it's amazing how many people heading south don't realize that people heading north don't have a stop sign. And I'm surprised there aren't more accidents there um, right now. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that. And I'm also happy to see that you are um, shrinking the um, crosswalk on Main Street because that the existing one seems like it takes forever to cross. The street is just so wide there. So I think between the stop sign and the crosswalk, it'll be a much safer intersection for people um, enjoying downtown. And, and the additional parking is so needed. You know, you go down there on a, on a nice uh, afternoon and you can't find parking anywhere. So I'm glad to see that there'll be um, some more spaces available down there too. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. I see uh, Mary has her hand raised. So Mary, if you'd like to jump in uh, here. Hi, yeah, yes. Um, I also agree. I think that redesign makes a lot of sense. I would like to see raised uh, beds as barriers for the crosswalk uh, across the Hartford Avenue. My question actually was this, this construction is likely to either almost immediately or subsequently damage a lot of the trees that are in the existing median. And I'm wondering if the plan uh, anticipates planting some replacement trees. As far as tree impacts, yeah, we're not at that point yet, but we will talk with our tree warden to do what we can to minimize the impacts. Um, there, there may be, uh, to your point, a few spaces that are shown that maybe are not gonna work out because they're gonna have too much of an impact, but that's something we'll work with our tree warden on. There's no. Uh, there was no plan necessarily to plant trees and there was no plan to take down trees as part of the improvements I'm showing. Um, but that's something we're working out as we get further through the design. Yeah. Uh, great. I, I, actually, I actually have an arborist license, so that's why I'm kind of okay. key on construction impact. Um, and that's actually, I don't know what your design is for when you get up to Knott Street uh, near Stanish Park, but there's a wonderful uh, sycamore tree there and I'm certainly hoping that's not going to be impacted by the construction. I have some thoughts about that, but I don't know what your plans are yet. So I'll wait to see what that part of the presentation is. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else on this intersection? I see Adam, get your hand up. Yep. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> I think from a pedestrian standpoint, uh, I can definitely see how this would certainly improve safety with you know, the design of the crossings. And I loved the inclusion of the rain garden as an example. Um, but I was interested just because I've been riding my bike a little bit more often lately as the weather's been getting nicer. And as I go down Main Street, it is a little bit of a challenge. And so sort of thinking about this crossing specifically, I'm wondering if sort of like how, how you would imagine that the uh, change in the design 
might sort of impact uh, sort of the desired manner in which someone would cross this uh, crossing on their bike. Um, and if it'd be worth sort of including whether or not there's anything in the design specifically that's sort of targeted towards cyclists, um, just trying to sort of think about uh, how I might be using this in the future. And Derek, I don't think you mentioned um, the striping and- Yeah, right. And that's and this overlaps with um, the overall project that we're looking at striping along the whole length of Main Street, but some of it is shown here. So the intent with the striping from approximately the fire station one um, all the way to uh, State Street is to provide narrower travel lanes. So we'll have still have the double yellow. We'll have shoulder lines at 11 foot widths. And then we're providing shoulders that at this point are just shoulders, but we're trying to provide at least four to five foot wide shoulders that are available for bikes. Um, you know, there's still discussion about what will be technically a bike path and what will be shoulders that have available or safer space for, for a bicyclist. So the plan you see here, down here, we have some dimensions. The intent was I'm, I'm trying to hold a five foot offset off the curb here. So we have that four bikes going northbound as well as there'll be a shoulder width that's six feet in some areas even wider um, going southbound. So we're really, right now we just have the double yellows and then curves. So with the shoulder lines, it really helps to keep traffic uh, more to the center and usually helps as a traffic calming measure as well um, to slow them down a little bit more because they feel more confined than they normally would. So we are looking at bike access throughout this whole uh, length of the project. That's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, I think that the uh, having, including that stripe is, is pretty important just because, you know, compared to right now, uh, I feel like the lines are a little few and far between just because we've sort of been incrementally adding uh, sort of uh, bike lanes uh, to Main Street over the years. Um, if there's any way maybe we could uh, have, have the shoulder line be sort of a, a colored line, for example, maybe that would uh, help to sort of direct people to the fact that this is uh, sort of, you know, this is where bikes are specifically. Um, for cyclists to know that, but then also uh, drivers. Um, I know that it's a challenge to actually fit a, a full bike lane at this point, given that we're planning. Um, but it, even if the stripe itself could could sort of uh, spell that out for drivers that this is something special, that might be uh, a helpful addition. Okay, yeah, that's something we could look at. I know there are uh, regulations as far as colors for traffic markings. So I'll have to look into that. Maybe if we are, if this stretch is gonna be designated as part of the Heritage Way bike trail and is a bike path, um, that or maybe something similar is something we can look at doing to better designate it as such and not just a shoulder line. Charles and Judith, I see you've got your hands up, please. Yeah, just a couple of comments. Um, I know the, the crossing on Hartford Avenue at the end of the sidewalk is a problem. And um, I confess I'm a miscreant who does that regularly. I guess when I see the ice cream being served, I, I take the shortest route. Um, so, I, But we did walk um, this area earlier today. Uh, and I think adding those triangles of brick pavers actually do a lot we'll do a lot to encourage people to use a crosswalk. Um, you know, that is kind of a natural way that I think people walk is along, you know, the straight sidewalk. And if there is sort of a, a shortcut to the uh, crosswalk, which is, you know, looks like it's moved a little closer now. Um, you know, when we walked it earlier, that actually was not burdensome. It wasn't an unnatural 90 degree left that we took at the end of the, the sidewalk. So I think that may solve a lot of the problems there. But I did have a question then, um, really more about the crossing in front of Comstock. Um, you know, I think there you'll still have traffic coming, uh, you know, from Maine and the Marsh intersection, um, which even in that short distance can get moving reasonably fast. Is there any uh, consideration of maybe making that uh, a speed table, um, you know, slightly raising it up? to also slow traffic uh, right at that crosswalk? That is something uh, we're considering as 
part of our overall bike ped plan that's being developed. Um, I, I will say that we are, um, you know, I, even with the stop sign, I probably should say, I mean, this comes up quite a bit in town. Um, this is a kind of a unique area where we have a, a lot of traffic, a lot of out of town traffic and a lot of pedestrians, which is why I think, you know, we're proposing a stop sign at the intersection. Similarly with, uh, you know, speed bumps or, or raised uh, areas in the road, we typically have tried to avoid them for plowing and operations uh, reasons. Although we have been talking this area of downtown Main Street and Old Weathersfield might be an area where something like that makes sense. So we have had that discussion. Um, I think as part of this project, we were not looking at doing it. However, uh, this stretch of road, Main Street is going coming up for a mill and overlay in the next few years. And I think when we're getting to that as part of our paving program, that would be the time we would look at what we wanna make changes for paving in that respect. So that's something we'll consider. And that's um, that for these mid block crossings, that is a way to slow traffic. Um, if everyone isn't aware of the raised crosswalk, it's more of a gentle uh, transition up to the top where the crosswalk is located, and then gentle transition down, different than a speed hump, which is a short, yeah high bump you go over. So it causes the vehicles to, to have to slow down. There's there's signage and there's uh, pavement markings that we put on them to alert them that that's there. But it's uh, it's not as um, obtrusive as a normal speed hump. So that's something that we, we would look at in these areas. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else on this uh, project that uh, hasn't had a chance to speak that would like to do so now before we move on? I did have a couple of just a couple of things. It's Rob O'Connor. Hey, Rob. Derek, I, I just want, first just a compliment. I mean, I think that the plan overall it's it starts to address what people I think in the area the, the speeding factor and and that you can't you can't have police lowering speed, but these design changes I think will definitely help address some of that. I, I really like the, the bump outs and the slow you know the, and, the, and the taking the radius on the curves. And I also am a proponent of that crosswalk by Comstock. I had a question. I, one question was on the parking spaces that you pick up on the south side of Main Street where the number four is, yeah, like for people pulling out and people in traffic coming to a stop there, do you have a kind of a natural problem with people? I, I mean, they basically have to wait till the traffic opens up, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's similar to what we have on the opposite corner over here now. Um, <clears throat> people backing up right near the stop yeah. bar. So that's not ideal, just a um, but we off. have that condition out here already. It's uh, like you said, you just, you, you know, you just got to work with it. Um, so, you know, that, like I said, that's not the ideal design, but we're trying to squeeze them in where we can. And given that they're coming to a stop sign, as opposed to before where they were going right through the intersection, maybe that's a little different, but now yeah. with them stopping there, they're going to, it should be slowing down. So you should be able to get out. And I just had two two other things. One, Adam raised it. I think that was good. The, I was wondering how, you know, as a cyclist, how to get through the intersection. And maybe for the, since this is the first of the plans, as you go through the plans, if you could just say, here's how I see this improving cyclists. And this is how I, and the pet, pedestrian things are obvious, but like things like that the car, you know, that five foot lane will be, it's better than nothing. But as a cyclist, you have to worry about the car backing into you. But my one suggestion maybe for, for possible signage is the is this whole area gets the um, cyclists may use the full lane kind of treatment where people understand that, you know, I'm not staying in a lane that's going to be next to a car. I'm coming out to the full 11 foot lane as a cyclist and, you know, operating like a, a vehicle. But I think those signs might help. But that was my two cents for that one. Thank you, Rob. Kevin, I think you had your hand up. I did. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll echo what everybody's saying about this being really good improvements. Thank you. This is really good. Um, one thing I'd like to see considered is 10-foot travel lanes. I know those are rather narrow, but uh, they, they can support travel. And um, if they're good, if we're going to employ 12, uh, 12, excuse me, 10 foot lanes in Weathersfield anywhere, this might be the place to start or one of the prime places because of the traffic uh, calming that we're all interested in uh, as a goal. Thank you. 
Thanks, Kevin. Anyone, um, anyone else on this one or we'll move on? Okay, I don't, uh, I don't see anyone raising their hand or waving their hand. So let's, uh, let's move forward there, Derek. Okay, and uh, you know, if you think of something later, feel free to bring it up. We could talk about it uh, at any point. Okay, so moving north up the road to the State Street intersection. Um, north on this plan is still to the right. Um, obviously, with this, some of the issues we have are, we have two directional traffic on both sides of the existing island. Um, we get a lot of traffic coming down through here uh, with the Department of Motor Vehicles up the road. And, um, you know, it's, I, I get a lot of complaints of high speeds. Uh, people traveling northbound really don't have to slow down to take this turn onto State Street. Uh, people that are coming the opposite direction have a yield here, but they don't have to stop. So they, you know, they can go pretty fast through there as well. So um, those are some of the issues we have. Another one for pedestrians is just this very long existing crossing. It's at a location where as vehicles turn this way, they, like I said, they're not, maybe they, they aren't slowing down very much and then it puts pedestrians in, in danger. Um, it's unprotected. So they're out in the intersection or out in the road the entire time. And uh, it's, it's for other pedestrian issues is this crosswalk over here at Howard Street um, really isn't connected to the sidewalk system and it goes just to grass on this side. So we really don't have any true pedestrian connections at that location. Um, so those are some of the big things that we are aware of uh, having issues out here. So I'll show you the plan. Okay, so one thing we were looking at and this is, you know, just a plan we, we there are different options out here. Um, one thing we had thought about when we initially did this application was enlarging the island and keeping this as a two-way movement, but narrowing the lanes to, for slowing them down. Um, now that we got survey and we're you know thinking about a little bit more in design, we were thinking, well, you know, that may slow them down a little bit, but maybe looking at have allowing this side of the island, enlarging the island even more, and allowing the south side of the island to be one way and the north side of the island to go the other direction would force that traffic that's traveling north towards the cove to come up here and take a left and come back onto State Street. So with that movement, that's gonna require them to slow down quite a bit. So almost more than a 90, it's more than a 90 degree turn. So with this, some of the improvements we were looking at was, um, was also narrowing lanes, even though they would be one way in each direction for the eastbound direction here, as you approach Main Street, we were looking at eliminating the yield sign and putting in a stop at this location. Uh, we're also looking at eliminating currently as vehicles travel around the corner here, heading on State Street, there's a yield sign. So with this uh, arrangement, it wouldn't be needed anymore because they're merging with traffic at this intersection. So they could, we could just eliminate that yield sign altogether. For pedestrian crossings, um, as I stated, this light gray is where it is now, um, similar to Hartford Ave. You know, so it's a problem because the sidewalks are, are just so far back. The safest place, um, given the volume of traffic and the speeds to cross, as I was saying, is as close to the intersection as possible. So we're showing a, a crosswalk across the island at this location, which requires us to build some connections into it to, to get people there. Um, it isn't highlighted green, but it should be. This area here would all be uh, existing pavement that would become grass, or we can do some kind of landscaping similar to what we're talking about in Hartford Avenue, maybe on the sides of the road, maybe in the middle to try and prevent people from crossing at this location. Um, but this would be an improved uh, safety for pedestrians being that we'd have two crossings instead of one long one. They're both very short and they're only crossing really one lane of traffic. Um, the location out here would make them very visible to people traveling up and down Main Street and State Street, um, where we wouldn't have a, the issue we have now where cars turn the corner and all of a sudden they're in a, in a crosswalk. With that, um, we were looking at this crosswalk I was talking about, Howard, we're going to eliminate it and look at a bump out on the east side of the road and putting the crossing where, where it would make more sense at the intersection. Um, so that way we have connections now to the existing sidewalk system and all our crossings are right here at the intersection where it's more ideal. With regard to uh, bicyclists, uh, as I noted, this is another overlap with the overall Main Street plan, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, with this, 
as shown, we were showing 11 foot lanes with a minimum of at least five foot shoulders. Um, the shoulders actually, this is where it's narrowest. They're, they're, they're wider, seven to eight feet uh, up and down the road in this area. Um, sometimes we get asked questions that if we're, you know, adding stripes, are people allowed to park along the front of, the, of their properties? Um, this came up on Hartford Avenue because we did a similar thing where we striped shoulders that weren't there before. Um, laws are that you can park with your car hanging over the line. You know, it, I think that might discourage people if it's not wide enough to accommodate the car, but it's not an illegal thing to do. So people are allowed to do that and vehicles, um, if needed, can go around them like they would today. Uh, so generally for cyclists, we got wide lanes, we're improving the pedestrian movement. Um, there are, like I said, there are different options here we could do, but this is one we were promoting as far as the one-way travel direction. And I would be you know, interested in getting feedback um, from the group if you have uh, thoughts on that, good or bad, um, would be appreciated. I, this is Tracy McDougall. Um, I think this looks great. And I, I appreciate now the challenges that you face probably regularly <laughs> with dealing with sidewalks and roads in old Weathersfield, like, oh, here's the same problem with this intersection. So um, yeah, I, I walk this area a lot and I think this is a big improvement and I really appreciate um, the additional sort of softening of the intersection um, and the narrowing of the roads to try and slow uh, people down. Can I just ask you, the only question I have, I mean, it looks really great. On the island, there's a, a, a yellow sort of horizontal walk, and then there's a little yellow perpendicular walk. Like, what's that? Right, right now where this uh, shaded gray area is an existing uh, paver block uh, area with a bench. Okay. So if it was to be kept, we could connect it to the okay. walk system. <laughs> That's why. Okay, because honestly, nobody's sitting in the middle of an island. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I don't know the historical significance or reason for it, so I didn't want to take it away. But no, we don't have to take it away. But I've never seen anybody like relaxing in the middle of that island. So okay, thank you. It looks great. Now that it's going to be roomier, you know, groups can gather there. <laughs> uh, Amy, I think you had your hand up first. Thanks, Peter. Um, <clears throat> what I'd like to comment on is I'm really grateful that you uh, listened to us when we spoke back in October of 2019. There were a group of us who advocated for um, the one-way roads in this area because we did see that initial proposal that kept the two lanes going both ways. And Again, traveling every day, I take this intersection, well, not now because of COVID, but every day when I would go into the office, I would, I would go through this intersection. And again, it was dangerous. People um, drive too quickly, don't pay attention to pedestrians and don't always pay attention to the flow of traffic. So um, I know we advocated for it back in October of 2019. And I'm really glad to see that it's being implemented in the plan because I really do think it'll have a great, um, you know, calming effect and slowing down the traffic, especially people heading north and then taking that left on State Street. They've come off the highway, a lot of them, and they're just in that fast driving mode. They fly down Main Street and kind of fly around that corner there on State Street. So I think that this one way, um, it'll take it'll take time for all of us to get used to it. Um, but I think it'll be great for um, pedestrians and, and drivers of cars and bikes as well. Thanks, Amy. Uh, just I'm going to jump in. Uh, Derek, I see you've got the the uh, pavement width of six, travel lane of 16 feet with a four foot uh, bike lane. Um, any concerns about that being wider and then folks maybe confusing it with a, you know, the two the two way traffic that exists today? I assume some additional signage um, would also need to be uh, on the approaches as well. Yeah, for the stop sign, we were proposing a stop sign with a do not enter sign on the opposite side. Okay. And the stop bar across the road here would be an indication, you know, those yep. would be the signals not to. Um, with regard to widths, typically one way aisles or roads are usually at least 18 feet. 
So this is, you know, 20 with the shoulder. So I don't, I don't think it's, it's too wide. I'm okay. thinking with the signage and the pavement markings that, uh, you know, I mean, maybe when this first comes up, we might want some advanced temporary signage to let people know there's been a change in the traffic pattern. Um, but overall, I think that'll, that'll address it. Great. Thanks. I think uh, Charles and Judith had their hands up first. Okay. Um, yeah, this is Judith. Just a little kind of history there. That little sidewalk, sidewalk to nowhere and the bench, um, there used to be a bus stop there that is no longer um, used. We've waited at that stop and been told by the driver that it's no longer a valid stop, but that's why that's that why was there. there. That's what that mm -hmm. bench is for, just yeah. so future reference. Yeah. Um, and I, I had a, just a couple of questions or observations. Um, you know, we talked earlier about the tendency of people to cross Hartford Avenue where they're not supposed to. It looks, I mean, this plan looks great to me. Um, the one thing that looks um, a little curious though is for someone walking north on Main Street, um, kind of on the west side in front of 373 Main, uh, you're required now to take about, what is a 110 degree turn um, to go back and backtrack a little bit to, to catch the crosswalk. Um, you know, as with the other places, and, I, and I, no, I noticed this in the plan near Mikey's place, um, is there a possibility of adding sort of a, a shortcut across that snow shelf in, in front of 373 that would cut that distance and discourage people from using the old um, crosswalk? Because um, I think that's what they might do with this plan. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. I, uh, I, I, I toiled with this, I, I drew it this way and then I drew it as a 90 and I didn't like that and I put it back this way. But yeah, you know, adding another walk, making this more of a triangular area like we did or, or even, or maybe looking at if I can realign this a little bit and cut the corner, uh, make it wider. Those, that was just a good suggestion to encourage okay. them to cross at the right spot. Yeah. Okay, and one last you know, minor, minor question. You show in front of 373, a slate walk um, but then when you get right up to the end of it at State Street, um, you know, it shows concrete sidewalk being put in. Will slate sidewalk at that corner be removed um, and concrete added? This is uh, about where the slate ends currently. It's so awesome. okay. And, and, and then it's concrete. So we we're gonna just keep try and keep that limit and keep the slate. Okay. From what I remember, we might need to remove one slab of it, but I was trying to match it in you know, it's where it is. Okay, great, great. That's nice. Thank you. Adam, Adam, I think you were up next. Sure. Thanks. Um, just sort of thinking about the design, one thing that I've been seeing lately um, are sort of like protected bike lanes so that when you're going around a corner, like in this uh, situation, if you had one, uh, if you put bike lanes within the arc of the uh, bump out, uh, you would be able to sort of uh, slip through as a cyclist if you were coming northbound uh, or you were coming down uh, 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 west through State Street. Um, and you would sort of be able to, uh, uh, if you could sort of just slip through, you wouldn't have to interact with the drivers as much uh, sort of in dealing with that corner that could sort of take away one opportunity for, uh, you know, a crash or, or anything like that. Um, and then you don't have to slow down, which is sort of a nice perk. Uh, I saw that you were sort of restructuring some of these bump outs, at least mostly on the right side, um, uh, northbound, but on the southern side as well. Uh, I put just sort of like a brief little sketch uh, on top of uh, what you have here, which I think is already great. I'm not sure if it's uh, maybe, maybe it's too much to, to ask for, but um, if you're going to be building out the, the bump out, maybe you can just include a little uh, sort of arc that you can slide through um, so that you don't really have to go around that corner, sort of saves a little bit of time. Um, and then, you know, just sort of the safety aspect might be an improvement too. I'm not sure I'm following you completely. Are you talking about having something that goes behind the curb or are you talking about just carrying a shoulder line around the corner? Um, I'm not sure if you can open your chat, but I did place a, a photograph in it. Um, it would sort of go, it would start uh, where that rectangle is, that large uh, 
uh, rectangle on the right side of the screen, you would sort of enter there, uh, sort of like if this wasn't uh, all grass, you would turn your bicycle uh, as, you're, as you're riding south, you would turn in a little bit. And then from there, you would go sort of where your cursor is right now to the, the number four. It would sort of be like a straight line, but also like an arc. Um, where it's like a skinny lane that you could sort of ride through there. And then that way you wouldn't, and then you would sort of exit where the four is and you wouldn't have to uh, negotiate that corner um, with uh, automobiles. So you'd be you going across where I'm showing the, the sidewalk now. You'd be coming in this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that. I'm just thinking. Um, I've it's seen kind that of an uncommon and, design, like, and so there may be my only from a from a maintenance drainage perspective. Um, mm -hmm. It's something we could think about. I, I sure. you know, this was a really like really. This is probably less bit well from that perspective. There's probably less cyclists making the turn here than than anywhere else on Maine. So I guess we'd have to consider our point. Did yeah. it make sense to do that? Sure. Certainly. Okay, okay. Um, Judy, I see, I, I see Judy's hand up. Okay, um, I, I disagree, Derek. I come around that corner all the time. And if now it's going to be a narrower lane with only one uh, lane of traffic, I do agree with Adam that that's a, a, an invitation for an accident. Um, my other question is, are these lanes uh, going to have signage on the pavement that they are for bicycles? That's part of the larger discussion with the bike ped group as to what areas we want to designate as official bike lanes versus just having shoulder space available. So uh, I think that's what's going to determine that if, if these, you know, this, this stretch of Main Street right now is um, currently part of our Heritage Way bike trail. So maybe that's where it's going to make sense to do it. Um, it's just not shown here on these plans yet. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're looking at a mill and overlay project in the next few years. So, you know, we have, you know, that we, whatever we do now can be redone. So it, it could be something we add or not. It's just not shown on these plans uh, currently. I think that might prevent accidents as well. If people realize that this is a bike lane, so they can't make such a wide turn or such a tight turn coming from north to south or north to west. Okay. But I like it. I like the stop sign. <laughs> I think that's going to help a lot. Anyone else on this one? Yes. Please go ahead. So this is Mary. My my question is, is there any provision or any way to make it safer if you're heading, I guess it would be east on State Street and you want to turn north on Main to as a bicyclist, not as a driver or a pedestrian, to make that turn. Um, currently, because northbound is two lane as is southbound when you're when you're coming off of state to go on to Maine. Uh, you know, I just put my hand out and indicate when I'm on state that I'm turning left and and go over on the what would now be the north side of the triangle uh, to take the turn. How is that going to work when you're out at the? I mean, it seems like as a bicyclist, when you if you come one way on state down to Maine, you're going to have to cross over. Main Street in order to turn uh, left to go north. And I'm wondering if uh, that's going to create a problem. Yes, you're correct. I'm assuming you're talking about coming too down this bicycle around to take the left and go this direction. Yes. Nor yeah, because normally I'm making the left up on State Street in front of the triangle by signaling I'm taking the left and I, and I take the two, ray, two, two lane road going north. Yeah, you, me, that seems a little bit safer than trying to cross on Main Street. So I think you're talking about coming down State Street, you stay on this side of the island now because yeah, it's ways. exactly. And then you cross exactly. Main Street to get it to this lane over here. Yeah, somehow that seems safer to me. I don't know, maybe I'm deranged, but 
I mean, either plan, you're still going to have to cross Main Street. The difference is you're coming down this way now and making a crossing here where traffic is mostly over here. So there's not as much traffic at this spot. However, so with this one, you'd have to come down to the, where the stop sign is and then make the left. As opposed to right, because be, right because now traffic uh, at the at the southerly side of the new proposed triangle traffic would be slowing down if they wanted to get onto State Street because most of them are taking the turn at that point, and that would change with this new proposal. Yeah, I don't know whether it'll be more difficult or more dangerous or not, but I just throw it out there as a food for thought. Thanks. Otherwise, I like the, uh, otherwise I like the uh, rearrangement. Anyone else on this one, uh, Kevin? Thank you. Uh, to the uh, to Mary's point, uh, from my point of view as a cyclist, I would suggest that this is a simpler design with the one way on each side. Um, therefore, overall, it would be uh, easier and safer for a cyclist. Even though, as you point out, it's it's like a longer path to take that turn. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, but, um, and, and it's just my opinion, but uh, uh, this, the uh, lanes on both sides of the island that begin State Street are gonna be narrower as a result of this, that should slow, uh, slow drivers down. And I know I'm a broken record about lane widths. I would like to see 11, width, 11 foot lanes here uh, not the over, overall width of the road necessarily, but the striping. Um, I know Derek said that 16 to 18 feet is uh, common or usual. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure I see the, the purpose for a wider, uh, a, a wider lane for a one, one direction of traffic. To me, uh, the, the narrower lane helps slow the driver down regardless of whether it's one way or two way uh, uh, arrangement. And the last thing, uh, and I, I, I didn't say at the beginning, I appreciate, uh, like Amy said, I appreciate that this does reflect uh, change from the last thing that we saw. So thank you for listening. And I think you already did some of this. Um, last time I mentioned I'd like to see the uh, the triangle sort of the state street forms sort of like an inverted Y. And I'd like to see uh, as close as anyone will dare to bring those two prongs of the Y closer together. So they, they're each one of those segments is closer to an individual T intersection with, with Main Street. So that, that way the, the corners are sharper and again, would slow drivers down. So that kind of gets all of that getting at the points uh, that people have been making about uh, the sweeping turns and the desire for a kind of like a back curb cutoff uh, that's going to create ADA problems and things like that. So I think the alternative might be to try to bring those prongs closer together and sharpen the turns. Uh, bring the striping to 11 feet, and then you've got, oh, seven or eight feet for a, uh, a shoulder that cyclists can use. And maybe that would satisfy the comfort level that, that cyclists are looking for with their comments. Thank you. Anyone else on this one? Uh, Kathy. Yeah, I'm on my mom's computer. I was gonna say I was gonna say you don't look like the Kathy. So yeah, yeah. I'm Teo Packard. I'm from Glastonbury, so not exactly local, but um, I was just looking at the storm drains um, right at the turn of the prongs. I'm just thinking about like trying to go around that on my bike. You would have to cross into the lane a little bit. Um, it's just something to take you into account. You might want to like move those to a little bit of a safer area. Yeah, I understand. The problem I'm having is this is so flat here. Right now, the curb line's way out here and it flows. But yeah. by moving the curb line in, it actually comes higher because of the way the road's pitched. So I've uh, redesigned this about five times now and I'm having a hard time with it. So I understand your point. Um, I am looking, I do have some other thoughts and maybe I can move it out of there. And they will have bicycle frames anyway, you know, they will for so you don't get your wheels stuck in them. 
Um, but to the extent I can, I'll, I'll move it if I can. Derek, maybe an, another couple of rain gardens, you know, with inlets or something like that. I don't know which way the water's flowing, but. Okay, uh, Judy, one more. Um, I, I think in the future, um, we really have to look at a three-way stop here. I, I think most of the people that are coming up this road are not from this area. They're going to DMV and I think that speed is a problem. And I think it's gonna be very confusing for everybody um, coming from out of town to know where they're supposed to go and how fast they're supposed to go and all that. I think that a stop sign on the uh, south side and on the north side of this um, triangle would really be beneficial. I know nobody likes stop signs, but I think that here, this is a dangerous intersection. I'm just looking real quick. Anyone else on this one? Um, I'm not seeing. Hi, this is Emily. I, okay. I don't know how to raise my hand, sorry. Okay. Um, I I really like this design. I feel like it. I live right at this corner. So I feel like this intersection looks so much safer than um, what it is right now. I, I just wanna ask if, you know, as we're, I know in the previous, um, application, you were talking about possibly looking at humps or, or, or speed bumps um, at the crosswalks. If this could also be considered for, especially the one on Main Street, um, there's, there's very little speed mitigation by people that drive down Main Street to go to the Cove. And I think it would make this intersection even safer. I know that you're planning to put on a stop and that flow will probably slow down with the hard left turn off of state. But I think anything else to make this safer um, for walkers and bike bicyclists would be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Last call on this one. Okay. All right. Uh, Mary, you still have your, your hand up or is that from before? Sorry, that was from before. Okay, thanks. Guess we'll move on then. Okay, uh, moving on to Knott Street and Garden Street. Um, here on this plan, we've rotated everything north is to the left. Um, this is Standish Park up here. Um, uh, DMV is up. Uh, off the top of the page here, a little bit to the right. So some of the issues we have here is uh, this is a fairly wide intersection. Um, you can see there's a pretty wide pedestrian crossing, a very long crossing length. Uh, we do have a crossing that's offset from the intersection across Garden Street, um, which is that situation of vehicles turning the corner and then all of a sudden being in a crosswalk. So the visibility is not the best um, where it's located. Um, vehicles coming up here to the stop often are traveling straight onto garden and they, they kind of just drive straight across the road. It's not the best situation. It would be better to have them take a right and a left than just shooting across the road at an angle, which I've seen happen many times. And uh, along the park, uh, that was one project we were looking at as part of the application. The other project was seeing what we could do here along the park. Um, as you're probably aware, there's a lot of cars that park they drive up over the curb. This darkened area is just gravel now because it's just been used for parking. It's not really officially parking. Um, so we wanted to see if we could address that and make that safer. Also the sidewalk system, uh, as you go down the traveling north on the east side of Garden Street kind of goes off into the park. There is no direct connection between this walk and the walk that's up here at the corner other than going in through the park here. So with that, We are looking at, um, so let me talk about the intersection first. Um, so similar to the other uh, intersections, we're looking at bumping out the curbs to try and tee this up a little bit more, make it a little bit tighter. Um, not Street, you may not be aware, is actually a state road to the east of Silas Dean Highway. To the west of Silas Dean Highway is town, uh, to the east is state. So we had to get a, a state uh, permit for this work and they, um, I originally had it a little bit tighter um, they had some concerns with certain vehicles making the movement off of Knott Street onto Garden Street. 
um, with this radius on the uh, southwest corner. So I, I did have to open it up a little bit, but it's still uh, you know, better than it is now, even with those changes. So with this, it would allow us to have a shorter uh, pedestrian crossing across Knott Street. And uh, we would be relocating this existing crosswalk here. We take it out and we move it up to the intersection. Um, so as was mentioned earlier, and we've talked a little bit about this with the other two intersections is um, originally with the plan, we were coming all the way back here and we were gonna run new sidewalk um, to maintain a consistent grass shelf all the way up to this intersection. You know, just thinking about it, we thought, you know, that's a lot of cost that could be used elsewhere on this project. So um, just looking at making more of a triangular type of connection here to the new sidewalk ramp and the new crossing here that would tie into the existing sidewalk system. As far as along the park, um, it, it shows up pretty dark here, but this, this darker area is a widening of the existing road, um, approximately, you know, seven to eight feet to allow for space for parallel parking. Uh, we're not proposing actually striping spaces. It was just to have space available. Uh, roughly 17 vehicles can park there. Uh, the yellow would be a new uh, concrete. It's called, it's integral concrete sidewalk and curb where it's all built together. It's a little bit wider than a normal sidewalk that would run along the length of the new parking area and connect to the existing uh, sidewalks at the north and south end. With that, we were looking at putting in a, uh, another striped crosswalk at Hubbard Place with some um, handicap ramp upgrades at this location. Um, you, you may have noticed recently in the last few days, um, we did do a little bit of work. We, we did reset this catch, catch basin top. Our, our sidewalk contractor did this work in replacing the existing ramp where it's going to need to be. Um, if you've been out there today, a uh, portion of not, I don't think they got all the way through it. It's been paved. It's going to be finished tomorrow. Um, so with that, we were trying to get these improvements done before they paved. MDC is part of their water main project paved from Hartford Avenue um, all the way west to Silas Dean Highway. So their new pavement extends to about this location. And the way this was designed, the green is what is existing pavement will be grass. So we'll be, we should be able to cut behind the new pavement for installing the new curb um, closer to the center of the intersection and not disturb the pavement too much. So in general, that was what we were looking at here. Um, for bike safety, uh, we, we are showing a segment of striping here with MDC having paving, the, this project, their project also includes Church Street. So we've provided them with a plan for restriping Church Street to provide shoulder lines um, for the same reason we've been talking about, narrower lanes with shoulders. Knott Street already had uh, double yellow lines and shoulders, although the shoulders were very narrow in some areas with wider lanes. So we did provide a plan to DOT and MDC to narrow, do the same thing, narrow up the lanes to 11 feet and provide um, wider shoulders available for bike space. So. What you see here is just a small segment that will be done as part of the MDC project, um, you know, in the coming weeks. Um, but it's being laid out with the crosswalk and the <clears throat> in the striping, with the intent that we're going to come in and, and try and tee up this intersection a little bit better um, at a later date when we get further along with this project. So with that, I'm happy to answer questions. Eric, there was an earlier concern about uh, I think it was a sycamore tree. Um, you want to speak to that or are you are you familiar with the tree that was questioned i'm not um i see the hickory not all of them are labeled there's a maple here we are so, uh, actually that was my question uh okay. this is mary yep. um it's, it's actually on knott street um which doesn't look like it's impacted per se by your plan so if you move continually more to the Oh, that be north, I guess. It's on the other side um, of the street. It's on the other side of the street. Yeah. It's yeah. it's um it's near the interest. It's near the um what I call the Garden Street extension. Um, it's it's right in that area, but it doesn't look like this is impacting it per se. No, nope. uh, and it's not drawn there. That was one of my concerns, but I knew that you're going to make some changes here. I wasn't sure whether it affected that tree or not. But I actually have a comment, and I. It may be outside the scope of this particular project, 
um, the Garden Street, so I, I actually live off of Hartford Avenue and off of Avalon, so I, I live on Harmon. So I'm always going through this area. And I, I a couple months ago, stopped actually taking a left from Knott Street onto Garden Street, what I call the extension. I'm not sure really that's got that as a designation because I find it's, it's safer if I continue on Knott Street, go to the intersection with Hartford, I can see a lot clearer. This isn't in your drawing. Um, and then take a left to go north. Uh, I, I wonder whether there's any consideration. I, there's some people who live off of the Garden Street extension, but when you go down that piece, which is um, not really part of this drawing, but I'm just throwing it out here because you're the town engineer, um, that whole intersection, and I, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the street that intersects with Garden Street and Hartford Avenue, those three streets that come together. Um, it's a very confusing intersection, and I'm wondering if there's any consideration towards, um, yeah, what is that? I can't see. Uh, Northbrook Lane. Northbrook Lane. Um, if, if, if you could actually put a Jersey barrier, but there's some nice ones that can be planters, but you could remove them if you needed to. Uh, right at the end of the Garden Street extension, so that the, the people who live on Garden Street extension could certainly have unimpeded access to their house, but you would eliminate that very confusing intersection, which also creates a lot of confusion for people coming north from the north down Hartford Avenue, turning on State Street. Almost nobody turns where they're supposed to, where the gap in the double lines is, and they start turning ahead of time. And I've seen multiple near head on collisions with people coming off of State Street. I also would would highly recommend that you get rid of the yield sign on Straight Street and make that a full stop because people just assume they have the right of way. They don't look at anybody coming north on Hartford Avenue and they just pull out in front of you. Um, so I think there's a lot of room for improvement in that whole triangular area. I know that's sort of outside the scope of your, your particular proposal, but I'd like to see Garden Street Extension not be a through street. I mean, I use it, I'll, I'll, I'll confess, I'll use it when I'm heading towards the town center, but I don't need to. And, I, and I've really eliminated using it when I'm heading in the Hartford direction uh, because it's just so dangerous. Um, and I also think it would eliminate some of the confusion and maybe some more signage is also needed for people coming from Hartford heading towards the DMV because I'm sure it's all DMV traffic that's creating this problem that where they need to turn some, some more signage on the road about where you need to turn because people are always making the turn at um, North Brick Lane, trying to get on, you know, they're starting to turn there, heading onto South Street, uh, I'm sorry, State Street. And uh, I've seen a lot of near head-ons in that whole area. So my food for thought, beyond the scope of what you're actually proposing today, but I, but I wanted to get it out there. Thanks. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise I, I do like your expansion of the width of Garden Street because it always looks like a mess because everyone always parks on what's supposedly grassy area or sort of gravelly area and just pave it and people are gonna park there. They're, they do the same thing on the other side of Standard Street. I don't know why you keep planting grass, just pave it because everyone's parking there. Thanks. Okay. Tracy, I see your, your hand up and then there's a couple of other people after Tracy. Um, yeah, I live on Knott Street and I would agree with Mary that even though we're not supposed to be talking about that little triangle area there, it is very problematic and very confusing for pedestrians and drivers. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think in general, this would be a big improvement. Um, I have a question and I'm you know, personally a big open space advocate and I'm loath to take away any um, green space that we have in Old Weathersfield, but the heavy use of Mikey's place. And um, I mean, uh, I, I hate to say it, but um, we need better parking and I don't, I'm not sure that just um, widening the area for the 
street parking is really the safest. Um, and then if you add along, I mean, I love, and also I love sidewalks. I walk twice a day, but when you add that sidewalk in there, you're gonna get even more people congregating in that area. And what I'm always nervous about and what I see a lot are people parked along the side of the street there and then they're loading and unloading kids and strollers. And I'm always watching for kids, um, you know, jumping out in between the cars. And I don't know, are there any alternatives for parking, better park, more safe parking for this area? I mean, are you thinking like about angle, you know, uh, perpendicular parking as opposed to parallel? Maybe, I don't know. What Are there other options or is this it? Well, yeah, no, there's there's other options. Um, I think, well, I, I can't say I frequent the park, so I, I don't know. Um, we were trying to stay consistent with how it's being used, just make it safer. Um, you know, we could look at nose end parking. That, that would be an option. Uh, some of the constraints we have is there are a lot of trees on this uh, right-of-way line that I was trying to avoid um, to do angled in parking I think we're going to have a lot of impact on those trees you could see these these are the boulders that are out there now so the sidewalks kind of going through where the boulders are um, you know we do have some utility poles that are going to end up falling in the sidewalk which is uh, you know it's not ideal but it is it is done um, that would probably be my biggest, if trying to park here, you know, we do have parking area, parking lot off the road here that I assume gets some use. You know, maybe that could be expanded if we wanted to look at that and try and get it off the road. But that would be my, I guess that would be my answer. If we were gonna look at any head in parking here, we'd be probably having a lot of tree impacts. Yeah. And what about Mary's idea um, is, I guess it's not within the scope of this project, but there is a lot of street parking by the basketball court and tennis courts, and people are just driving on that snow shelf. And I don't know if we could sort of throw some better designated parking in there. I think that would work too. Yeah, I'm, I, I've seen that myself. And, you know, we were thinking, or I was thinking something like this might work over there too, to better define it. Um, I know there's limited shelf, but uh, we had that same problem on the opposite side. So it's not part of this project, but it's something we'll, we're aware of. Okay, thank you. Okay. Derek, part. Can I just mention, um, I know that the schools are looking at um, replacing Hamner Elementary School and some of the proposals were actually to build new um, where some of the fields are and then have the fields where the school is. So have you looked at like the, these, this area and in, in parking situations in relation to any of the school plans and how that might impact it? I'm just thinking if, you know, if this, if they are going to, and I know it's not going to happen next year, it's a long, you know, process, but if there, if there is talk about um, moving the school to the field and the field to where the school is, or, you know, th would there be parking there that then may help Mikey's place? Yes, I, sus I suspect that there will. Um, I, you know, I, I could say I'm not all that familiar with where the plans are now. I know it's been talked about for quite a while. I, I would say whatever we're doing now, just given that it's mostly along the park in this area, probably wouldn't have an effect if they built the school over in this area. Um, you know, my guess is whatever we're doing now still would remain and be useful for the park. Um, but, you know, I, I have no idea what their, what their layout's gonna be as far as down here and what parking that could be. I, I suspect as part of that, maybe there's an expansion of this parking lot. Maybe there's more parking up in this area for the park. Yeah, possibly. But unless you know something I don't, I'm not sure when that, if that will ever come to fruition or when. No, I, I and I haven't seen the plans in a long time, to be honest with you, but I was just thinking, um, you know, you don't want to do work now that you, you'd undo three or five years down the line if it does come, come to pass. So I was just wondering if there was consideration. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Uh, Tom Carson, I, you've had your hand up for a bit. Uh, yeah, just quickly because it came up, the whole idea of Garden Street extension. I feel like I'm on that road eight times a day, uh, going back and forth to school. And and I thought about it a lot too, that that, that whole triangle is just a confusing confusing section. Um, but but I don't want to take up any time since it's really out of the scope, but my suggestion has always been maybe turning that into a one-way street. If you don't want to block off access completely, that if that is turned into a one-way street, then, you know, maybe in the southwestern direction or southeastern, whatever, the southern direction, um, it just, you know, when you go and just to direct traffic more to the four-way stop there or the um, yeah, the four-way stop. But that that's always something that's been in the back of my mind, that if you turn it into a one-way street and then you still open it up to bikers, um, it just might make it a little bit less confusing when, when um, you know, with all the different access points in and out of it. You know, and the other thing I'd add, too, is that at some point in the future, I'd like to see a stop sign at State Street rather than a yield sign because the traffic really does fly around that corner, traffic heading upstate to uh, north comes really quickly. And even though that, that's a shortened crosswalk than the way it used to be, it's still pretty pretty dangerous. So that's just, I just wanted to put my two cents in on that. Okay, thank you. Um, don't see any new hands up. Anyone else on this one? I've got a quick comment. Oh, Judy, well, oh yeah, Kevin and then Judy. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Derek, for uh, making the corner on the west side sharper. Uh, the, at least the current uh, screen you have, it's toward the oak. Okay, now the, the, the corner toward the bottom of the screen. Uh, I guess you've made it as sharp, and sharp as you can within state limits. Uh, is that also the case with the north, uh, the corner that's been pulled in to the top, toward the top of the screen, or can that be sharpened some more? to kind of direct people, uh, you know, kind of cut off the idea that people can shoot across to the Garden Street extension we've been talking about. Yeah, this this corner has also been designed for the, the minimum vehicle. We, okay. we were able to tighten it up a little bit more than we could have because we're shifting the, uh, you see the double yellow center line here, we're shifting it over a few feet. So what we have to be, what I have to demonstrate to DOT is that a, um, uh, a, a commercial design vehicle that can, has a 45 foot radius can make this turn without encroaching into the westbound lane of uh, Knott Street. So this layout just gets us there. Um, but yes, I agree with you. I was trying to push the traffic as far west as possible to avoid that straight shot across. Thank you. And thank you for your efforts to get MDC to repave the section of Knott Street as well as Church Street. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Um, I have just a question about the uh, area that is going to be paved along Garden Street. Is that going to be the perforated uh, concrete like on the green, uh, the streets across the green? No, this was proposed just as pavement. Pavement. Okay. Uh, my second comment is that I think that head in parking where the boulders are would make, as Mary said, or whoever said it, it be much safer getting kids in and out of cars because it would be off the street. And I don't know how far the trees are from that, but um, I think that that would be ideal if you could have 10 spaces there, um, head in parking. The boulders take up quite a, quite a space. Yeah, and I, you know, just rough, roughly looking at the plan, I think we would be taking down a lot of those trees to do it. Wherever we did the head-in parking, we'd be having to take down some trees. So I don't know um, how, you know, if that's going to be amenable to people or not. I could take a look at, you know, a conceptual layout to see if that works. I just, that's my concern. Okay. Um, Kevin, any Anyone else on this one? May I ask a real quick question? Um, so these new sidewalks that connect um, existing sidewalks out to the street, like at that intersection of uh, Garden and Knot, do those become the homeowner's responsibility for maintenance, for snow removal and such? Yes. Oh. Okay, 
Thanks. Okay, I think um, we're ready to move on to the, um, Allison Norton got a hand up. Um, I don't think I had a chance to ask a question. My question is actually not about this. So if you're moving on, I can okay, wait. Okay, yep, let's move on then. All right, so this is the uh, overall Main Street plan I was referring to earlier. Um, just to orient you, north is to the right. Uh, the far left side of the page is the Fire Station 1, Church Street, Hartford Avenue, and State Street. So I'm just going to scroll uh, down through and show you some different things we're looking at <clears throat> along with the striping and uh, just we can talk about it as we go. Um, so here you can see from the fire station to uh, Church Street, <clears throat> excuse me, we were looking at uh, double moving the double yellow center line in some areas, uh, putting in 11, maybe there'll be 10 foot lanes with shoulders through this area. We also were looking at uh, adding another crosswalk. There's currently, we have a crosswalk at the intersection with Church. There's an existing crosswalk at the in front of the Web Dean Stevens. And then we're looking to add another crosswalk um, in the vicinity of the Keeney Center. So looking at sight lines and parking and potential plans for maybe some, uh, you know, utilizing the public parking behind the fire station more in the future. Uh, we were looking at a crossing at this location that gives the best, I think, sight lines for traffic. Um, right now there's, there's not one. So we'll just be adding some ramps and, and striping across with, with signs. The road is so narrow here. I, I can't really do curb bump outs without taken away from the, uh, the shoulder that would be available for bicycling. So we were gonna leave it um, with the existing width as is. A little further down the road though, um, we do have an opportunity where the existing crosswalk is in front of the museum to put some bump outs in and still leave uh, you know, at least a four or five foot uh, gap here for, uh, for bicycle use. And at the same time, reduce the crossing. These, as we've talked about on some of the other locations, you know, could be potential raised crosswalk locations in the future. Um, I think whatever we do now would be designed to accommodate that if that is implemented, um, just it's not right now part of this project. So I'm just gonna keep uh, scrolling to the north. This is the intersection with Church in Marsh Street. Um, you remember a number of years ago, it was, it was redone and stop signs were added. Um, with this project we were thinking about doing was doing a mill and overlay because at that time um, that wasn't done. Uh, so it's in pavements in pretty poor shape. And with that, we can revise some of the line striping and some of the crossings that we have out here. So starting on the Marsh Street side, um, you can see the existing sidewalk ramps as they are. We're proposing to keep them as they are. Um, one thing we we're looking at doing for the Marsh Street crossing is right now it's a, it's a pretty long crossing. Um, pedestrians are out in front of the island, kind of in the intersection. So, you know, one option would be to uh, cut the island back a little bit. Uh, there's a light pole, a decorative light pole and a flag pole there. We could cut it back a few feet and bring the crosswalk through an area here that would sit between the new curb and, you know, some kind of an island. Uh, you know, with turning movements that are required for vehicles in the intersection, maybe this is just a flush stamped concrete or stamped bituminous island. It could also be um, slope granite curb with uh, stamped concrete in the middle that's maybe four inches high. So it's mountable if a vehicle needs to use it for a turning movement, but it would provide a little bit of at least definition as to where the crosswalk is and provide a little bit of separation between traffic and people crossing the road at this location. Down through here, we were looking at, it. we'd be replacing the lines. There's not a lot we can do without really getting into moving the curb line substantially. Um, for the, I guess, uh, eastbound direction, it's pretty wide right now. We could leave a, a fairly wide lane uh, shoulder that would transition into the existing shoulder for now. Going towards the intersection, uh, it's a little more tricky because we just don't have a lot of width. You know, we could probably leave a couple feet of shoulder along this edge, um, but that's about all we can do. Moving over to the other side of the intersection, um, south and north sides pretty much stay the same. Um, we were looking at potentially doing uh, some kind of an island. Right now we have a striped island. Um, 
you know, there's different things we've discussed about doing maybe a raised island with some trees planted, or we could do some kind of a flush uh, stamped bituminous or concrete island to provide a little bit more aesthetics and just really look nicer than the, the painted island that we have now within the limits of the milling would be an option. Another thing that could be considered with the milling is the crosswalks themselves right now are painted. Um, originally, the plan was to, to repaint them, although we, we could consider doing more of a decorative type of crosswalk that has the uh, white stripes, but also might have a stamped bituminous border that has you know, different colors of brick patterns um, to make it more aesthetic, being that's kind of the central hub of uh, downtown Old Weathersfield. Before we move on from this, um, I just wanted to, you know, get some feedback if anybody has questions or thoughts on, you know, what we're showing here for improvements, and then we'll continue down the road. Anyone want to jump in here? Kevin? Kevin? Yep. Yes, thank you. Uh, was there any consideration to uh removing the right turn only lane going west on marsh street that interse intersects with maine i think that was something that the oh dear the town uh we had a conversation with a consultant that was actually doing complete street straining training and they kind of as a favor took a look at some intersections and this was one of them uh i I don't recall what the, do you remember what the results of that were? Uh, did they determine it wasn't necessary? I, I assume that's probably there as a heavy turn movement heading to DMV in that area of town. Um, I think they weren't in favor of it. I'm not sure that they were saying, you know, people were, that it was extremely unsafe. Um, I just, you know, when I use that particular area, it's, it's longer for pedestrians to cross and it's, it's a little dicier feeling for bicyclists to go through there as well. Um, I, I'm not sure whether I go through there at the right times, but I've never really seen a lot of traffic build up to the point where I felt two lanes was needed that it could stay a, you know, a one lay, a one, one lane branch of that road and people would just turn however they wherever they needed to go. Well, that's something we could look at. Um, that would probably involve more of a uh, traffic analysis. You know, I have to look at what was done already. I know I know what you're referring to, that they did that for us as part of uh, the, what they were looking at as part of the project. Yeah. That's something we, we could look at. If I, don't th I don't think it needs to derail what you're doing, given, given that it's a narrowing. And maybe it's something that would be good for uh, one of those tactical, you know, put out some cones for a couple of weeks and see how it goes. Uh, and then when you get to repaving, you know, it'd be easy to deal with the curb or the line striping or whatever. Uh, Derek, maybe you want to briefly mention what we're trying, uh, pursuing on Great Meadow Road and Marsh Street, those improvements, maybe when those improvements ultimately get funded. Uh, we could go all the way to the intersection of Main Street. Uh, are you, oh, yeah. So you talk about future with lots of. Right. Yeah, we, um, you know, some of you may have heard we've gotten some funding to put new sidewalks and do some restriping for bike pad improvements between phase one is between Hart Street and the Putnam Bridge. We have funding for that. There's about $720,000 available. So we're starting work on that. The phase two would be connecting um, Main Street with Hart Street. And as part of that, as Peter's alluding to, we could uh, look at some restriping options as well, um, where we can you know, provide better uh, accommodations for both pedestrians and for uh, bicyclists. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to um, you know, the, the, one of the future, uh, one of the plans that's coming up. So we could talk about that a little bit more when we get there. Okay, uh, Adam, you've got your hand up. You're muted. 
Adam, I think you're muted. Okay. There you go. I uh, just sort of along the lines of what Kevin said. Um, I think that if you either sort of if you reduce the lane or you remove the right lane that's on Mars Street, certainly that could be uh, you know have an impact on people returning right um, and sort of the general capacity of that gutter that's right next to First Church. But um, you know, if traffic needs to extend, uh, sort of back up a little bit, I think Mars Street is plenty long to sort of accommodate that. And the overall capacity of the intersection may not be that great to begin with, since sure, people can turn left and right at the same time, but most of the time it's sort of acting as like, uh, you know, a four-way stop where one car is going at a time. Um, and so that might sort of reduce the capacity such that it's not really necessary to have the two lanes. I was going to say, you know, if you do, uh, you could either shrink what you have there to the one lane that can just go the three directions, or you could repurpose that uh, into sort of like a bicycle gutter, and you could have sort of a, a snazzy little uh, arc between that the end of that Marsh Street uh, right turn lane uh, between that and the start of the uh, bike gutter on the uh, on on Main Street there uh, to the north. Um, just sort of like connecting that right turn lane to there, uh, you know, it would sort of encourage people to just sort of continue their, their path. Uh, it just might make it a little bit more hospitable, um, which may be worthwhile just because it's kind of a challenge to address, you know, the other areas on Main Street uh, uh, south. Um, and then you were talking about expanding the, uh, the gutter, uh, but people are always going to be sort of be parking there in the meantime. Um, and so it's it's obviously really challenging to add, uh, you know, substantial bicycle infrastructure southbound, but at least, you know, in that sort of Mars Street section, that's one area that sort of we have an opportunity to make it, uh, you know, a substantially better experience. So just some food for thought. Thank you. Thank you. Rob O'Connor. Thank you. I want to agree with Adam on that, like, and, that, and just as a, a pedestrian perspective that that right turn lane i think if, if i've had near misses getting killed by cars it's crossing there and having the the, the car in the right lane being their sight line being blocked off by the other lane and you know that guy might be going straight but the right lane guy doesn't see you and comes out and it's i mean i would be in favor of at least trying to figure out some way to not make it i think it also acts like a you know like an implied right turn when you want to make it with a not full stop because you have a car blocking for you and, you and i see people all the time just come up to it and just almost yield just like come through it um and then crosswalk wise i i'm i'm so excited this is like you know nerdy but to have the other crosswalk by the by the keeney center especially with i think people know the that that parking lot is it's like a it's an all, all grown-up parking lot it's getting used like like a almost like a New York City commuter lot now, <clears throat> which is great because people are walking out of it. But I'm just wondering, Derek, I know the site, it's a sight line issue for people on Main, but how about for where that crosswalk is for people coming out of the driveway? There's a car right there right now. Like, I guess, I guess if you're making a left, you're going to see people in the crosswalk. Just, I guess, I might say never mind now. <laughs> Zoomed up, I think it probably is. Like, you know, I, I was worried about people coming in and out of that driveway with a crosswalk so close, but I think it's probably, um, it's probably 50, 50. And then I, I, I think the natural inclination is where that slate walk is. I mean, I was there last night going, Oh, it's going to be right here. Like you kind of feel like when you come out of that building and even people walking out of the, out of the um, parking lot to get to that crosswalk, you know, they're going to walk down the road, the, the driveway basically to get to the crosswalk as opposed to, coming along that sidewalk, looping around the fountain and then being able to, to cross, you know, even, even if it's on an angle, I think there's, there's merits to both of those ways. But I think that like, just if you, if you're parking and walking through that parking lot, your natural thing is going to be walk on the grass or walk along where people are coming in and out to get to that crosswalk. <clears throat> and my third, this is a, another comment but I, and i know it's this might be off the scope too but and i think it might be part of the parking study but the the fire the fire department and it's and it just would be paint but if there's a way to paint 
the road to let people know that that's a you know fire truck pull out <clears throat> and as well as an in and out arrow for the park and people parking there and walking across that it's so close to the scope of this that i and you know in between the other the other intersection that i think it would be a traffic calming and also a safety bonus to get that stripe to make it look like you know like if you go to most go down franklin ave there's a, a fire station there the yellow um boxes out in the road painted out in the road <clears throat> people coming after they pass that crosswalk and if there's a fire or a truck coming out they're not going to have a lot of time they're probably going to be accelerating there as opposed to being like if they see the yellow markings and they know there's a possibility i know there's a sign there that's this fire station approaching but i think in the in the street it would help too okay but i i um i think it's i think it's another you know a, potential major improvement in the area. And um, I do like to, I also like this, the concrete stamping of that Marsh main intersection to kind of like brand it as uh, different from the, all the other intersections, you know, the, the main, the main area. And I like the bump outs on that crosswalk too, because it's, it's not good right now. Okay. Thank you. Ready? Anyone else on any of these? I think with the, all the comments and suggestions, we've, we've spent our budget three or four times over. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to figure it out. Anything else? No? Uh, Erica, we've got other slides or where yeah. are we in your yeah, presentation? I'll, I'll keep going. Um, yeah. you just with, you know, with what Peter's pointing out, and I didn't say it after we finished with Garden and not, the there were, like you said, 10, 11 different locations we had in the original application. Um, the main projects, I think for us initially, uh, because we don't have other ways of funding them would be the intersections of Maine and Hartford, Maine and State, Garden and Knot. I'm looking at those as the core projects. The other projects, like some of these bump outs, new ramps, mill and overlays that we could, we could do in other ways. So I think we're the, I haven't had a chance yet to really price out the, the, those three core projects to see how much of the $393,000 they use. I think whatever's left, we're gonna try and piece some of these other ones in. Um, just understand that maybe not all of them are gonna be able to fit in the, in, because we've changed the scope of work on a lot of these to include more work than we initially anticipated. So. You know, if we don't get to them as part of this project, it'll be something that um, we, we have available and designed and we'll try and find other ways to fund it. And I say that like with this for Main Street, um, I think the striping all the way down Main Street is maybe about $5,000. It's not a huge cost. So even, you know, as part of our annual striping program, I might be able to do something like that if it doesn't get funded with this project. So just something to keep in mind. As we continue down Main Street, it's, it's, you're going to see it's pretty consistent with the 11 foot lanes and a, a minimum of five feet of shoulder space for, for bikes. What you see in the blue box is what we already discussed. This is these are the improvements that we were looking at at the Hartford Ave intersection. Um, the line striping would carry through uh, heading north. And you know, obviously we're at the State Street intersection. So this was the, going to be uh, the limit of striping at um, I believe it's Kelly Ave down here. So from fire station one to that point was what we were proposing as part of the project. If we can, we can do it as part of the project and fund it. All right, so uh, let me, unless anybody has any questions, I'll move along. Um, this is uh, looking at Marsh Street at Broad Street intersection. So the village cemetery is here. North is up, straight up on this plan. Um, some of the issues we have here is the uh, sidewalk on the north side of the road just terminates in front of the cemetery. It doesn't come continue to the intersection. Uh, we have the pedestrian crossing here that crosses from a ramp to really the driveway to the um, cemetery. However, there is no, like I said, no, no connection to the sidewalk system. Um, probably the biggest issue out here is sight lines. Um, obviously, we have a very sharp turn in Marsh Street. There's a fair amount of traffic. They drive at a fairly fast rate of speed. And uh, the sight lines out here are, are not ideal for, for that situation at this crossing. Uh, this side of the road is not great. Uh, the north side of the road is even worse, um, given that there are a lot of trees and bushes on this side of the road that are impeding sight lines. 
So with that, we initially, as part of our application here, we're planning to extend the sidewalk down to the intersection and put a new crossing in here. Um, however, I think given that some more thought, given the issues we have with sight lines at this location, we are looking at other options to um, provide a crossing, but do it in a safer manner. So I'll start up here. This is where we were thinking as part of this project, we would have an opportunity maybe to do a mid block crossing um, on the existing sidewalk system with some new ramps, signs and a crosswalk that based on um, you know, typical DOT and federal standards for sight lines would provide about a 400 foot sight line as vehicles come around the curve here. Um, which given the speeds that we're assuming they're going would be, would be considered a safe distance. So that's why this is pushed up where it is. It would leave this right now as a, as a terminus. It wouldn't continue, but it would allow for crossing the road without having to go all the way up to Main Street. This is probably about a third of 40% of the way to Main Street, so it's not quite halfway. I'm trying to keep it as close to the Broad Street intersection as possible, but still also provide adequate sightline distances. What you see in light yellow here is just some thoughts we have. Peter mentioned the lots of funding. Um, this is part of this is what was part of our phase two that we're hoping to get funded through lots of and a future solicitation. The yellow line is uh, the yellow sidewalk here is going to be a monolithic sidewalk along the edge of the existing road. Um, we're going to be narrowing up the lanes. What you see at the intersection here is some that something that wasn't in our initial plan, but might be something we add when we go forward with an application to maybe look at teeing up Broad Street a little bit more um, to try and eliminate the cars speeding around the corner heading onto Broad Street, and as well as um, providing maybe a better sight line once we do some of these improvements to Marsh Street. Really standing out here, there, there, it's not great for sight lines, but the best location is near the center of the curve here where you have decent visibility down Marsh Street toward looking towards physical services and good visibility looking back towards Main Street. So one option might be to connect to the existing sidewalk system that runs on the east side of Broad Street, bring it to the intersection here with a crossing and a connection to the west side of the street and bringing on the island, bringing a sidewalk down with a crossing up Marsh closer to that sharp turn. Like I said, that's more put in there as future because right now we, we don't have enough funds to do something that extensive as part of this project. We, we could do something like I'm showing up here as a mid block crossing as part of this project with the intention that we would do this later. It would leave us with a couple of crossings, you know, that are not too far apart. Um, although I don't have a timeline I and mean, we're just starting design on phase one. So phase two could be a number of years down the road, this would be available for that time. And then, you know, they're spaced out enough that this sidewalk will eventually go all the way to uh, the Charter Oak, Putnam Bridge, I'm sorry, to the Putnam Bridge as part of DOT's trail project that's coming up. So these are looking at, I'm looking at future improvements. This is something we could do, you know, now, I think if we can, uh, you know, if we can work out the funding. Uh, if not, there might be other ways, like I said, of funding something like that. Does anybody have any questions specific to this location? I just think that uh, I just think that people drive down Broad Street and want to go directly into the cemetery, which is what I do all the time. So if you could put a bike lane, uh, bike uh, designation on the side of Broad Street and keep the crosswalk directly across to the cemetery, I think that would be very helpful. But to make everybody go down the street and then cross, I don't think it's going to happen. Well. So I understand. Yeah, where are you looking for a crosswalk at the driveway? Right at the driveway to the cemetery, because so many people go through the cemetery on bikes. Yeah, and that's that's the spot that's most dangerous for crossing, which is why I'm trying to get away from that location. That's pretty close to where it is now. So I'm looking at a crossing either down here and or up here where we have better sight lines. I don't think that the lower sight line is any better coming off of Marsh Street. People travel so fast along there, at least if it was about 200 yards up or 200 feet up towards the west, it would be a little bit better. That That's a terrible spot to put a crosswalk. Well, 
as I said, being out there and taking measurements, that, that's the best sight line we can get out there if we're gonna have something. If otherwise, we're gonna have to be up here. This is where it needs to be to be designed properly for the right sight line. I could put it closer where it's a little bit easier to, to come up and around if we're not gonna have one here. However, I'm just saying we don't have the adequate sight line unless it's this far up. From these points with some clearing, I'm not saying necessarily taking down trees, but clearing some, maybe there's, I think there's some big bushes that are along the edge of the cemetery could be moved back. I think we could get the adequate sight line at this location, but that's a future discussion. Right now, the discussion would be, do we want to put something in at this location or move it closer to the intersection where it's not going to be as safe, but better than it is now. I think right now, this is the worst place to be crossing and that's where the crosswalk exists. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Anyone else with comments on this one? I see a couple of hands. Mary, you got your hand still up? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Judy that because I do the same thing. I cross exactly where she does and into the cemetery. And I think the reason for that is it's actually avoids a lot of the confusion at Main Street. So maybe the main improvements might alleviate some of the some of the need, but I, I, I mean, I go through the cemetery and then I go through the cemetery, the church's parking lot, and then I'll take a right onto Main Street and then and then go up State Street and it kind of avoids some of the congestion downtown. Um, I understand, Derek, what you're saying about why that's not a good sightline place, um, maybe a crossing that's not too far towards Main Street, but gets people to, to do that shortcut as bicyclists. Um, might be the happy medium. Um, it's 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 a dangerous area, um, but it gets very confusing and congested around Main Street sometimes too. So I think that's why people cross where Judy was indicating that they do. So I, I don't know that there's a good answer, but I, I think you have to understand how people are likely to keep bicycling. Thanks. Well, I mean, similar to, you know, the Hartford Ave or State Street pedestrian crossing, like you can't stop people from crossing where they want. I just, from a, from a safety and engineering perspective, am very hesitant to put in something because people want to cross there where I know it's unsafe. So I've got a design for safety. Maybe we build yeah. them where it's safe and you cross where you want, but you do so at your own risk. That, you know, that's going to be true at any time. No. We do. I, I, I understand that. I just wanted to clarify as to why people cross there in case that wasn't, you know, part of your understanding of what's the, the flow of traffic. I, I certainly understand you've got to cross, you've got to design crosswalks that are safe and that will also comply with DOT regs because I'm sure this is DOT's territory. Thanks. Okay. Adam and then Mary, if you still have your hand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if a traffic study needs to be performed to lower the posted speed limit. I wasn't sure if that had an impact on the sight line requirement such that if it were different, you would be able to uh, employ different design uh, solutions. Maybe that could uh, help. But I also do go across from Broad Street to the cemetery, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, thank you. Yeah, with regards to to speed limits, we could reduce the speed limit. Um, I think traffic drives as traffic does. So that sight line I'm talking about to have an adequate, probably is about five miles, five to 10 miles an hour over the existing speed limit, because that's how they're traveling. Um, you know, that's probably a little bit conservative. Maybe I can pull this, you know, back a little bit closer to the intersection and still, you know, feel comfortable with that. But that's something I could look at. Okay, uh, Rob? I guess I just throw a different point of view, but I, I for me, I, I look at uh, crosswalks as different from what I do on a bike. And so for me as a cyclist, I do the same thing. We, we cut to the cemetery a few times a week and I, and I do what cyclists do, act like a car. So for me, if, for me, it's more important that, that maybe Broad Street gets kind of turned so it's perpendicular. I stop at the stops, you know, I stop at the cross at the bar and I go across like I would if I was a car. So I, I, I think I think it's important for pedestrians, though, the sight line part, you know, you, as a pedestrian, that's that you can feel the danger when you cross there. As a cyclist, I mean, it's like I, I just do what I do when I'm not going to I'm not going to ride my car when I see a car whipping up the, the thing and my bike is the same thing. I just kind of 
just and maybe maybe some signs in advance that say bicycles crossing or something like that that lets people know it's not a crosswalk but but watch out for people who are making this this trek across and it's um i mean equally as scary coming the other way from the cemetery across it's like it's harder to see there too i think so is the use of the cemetery point. roads uh it sounds like a lot of people are doing that. Is that to avoid going up to the main street and center, uh, main and church intersection that's not well designed for cyclists or is that a cyclist's route or something that's utilized because it's- I think it's, I think it's part part avoidance and and for, for us, it's like part, we like to look at the gravestones while we ride our bikes through it. I mean, it's kind of a nice ride in some ways, but I think it does. I mean, it, take, it takes you away from the intersection we were talking about before, that right turn lane on Marsh and Main, which is like you don't want to you don't want to be in that intersection with people whipping up behind you in cars. So, so it, it, does, it does, it takes you away from there. And it is a good cyclist loop, too. It's a, it's a good route. Okay. If I'm going up to Main Street, I will go on the sidewalk rather than in the street. Okay, I was just going to bring this up so I could see what you're referring to. So I guess what I'm thinking is if if accessing the cemetery is something that is utilized and wanted, you know, maybe when we get to these improvements down here, we could maybe we can make us, you know, some kind of a bike path connection from broad to this so you can cross where it's best to cross, but still have bike, you know, bicycle access. So if we tee this up and, you know, utilize some of the island maybe we can do something better accommodate bikes not just make it for pedestrians but that, that's something we can look at when we get to that point Tracy you've had your hand up or, or is that still you have something to say no okay Judy I see you got your hand up again I'm sorry um okay. just for history's sake that island um, years and years ago, Frank Morris wanted to eliminate the island so that um, he thought that the dog leg on there was a bad thing. It's actually a very good thing. It slows the traffic way down coming onto Broad Street. And he wanted it more for his trucks to make the turn so that they didn't have to go all the way around the block. But I will tell you that island is sacred. <laughs> so don't even try to get rid of it. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right, two more. Um, this location is uh, near Weathersfield Cove. You can see Hanmer Road here in the dark gray, Main Street as you get uh, entrance into the Cove parking lot is down here. Um, right now we have an existing Heritage Way trail that comes down Stone Dust, kind of narrows out and then ends up in Hanmer Road. Um, right now we Currently have sidewalks that extend and just terminate in front of this house with no uh, connection to the trail system. So we were looking at reconstructing the 10 foot wide trail, uh, bring it down to Hanmer Road, modifying uh, the wood rail fence as needed and putting a spur off of stone dust that would connect to a sidewalk extension uh, near the property line here to provide the pedestrian connection without having to go out into Hanmer Road. With that, we were also looking at a spur of a four foot wide stone dust trail that would come over to, there's an informational sign over by the Cove Warehouse. It just as a, as a path, uh, maybe there could be some benches along it that people can walk down there and see the informational sign. So that um, those improvements are pretty consistent with what we originally proposed. Um, I know one issue that's been brought up is Han Hanmer Road in this area can be a pretty tough condition. So that might be something we need to look at improving uh, as part of this. Um, but uh, you know, if there's anything else anyone wants to add, I'm happy to hear it. Looks good. Okay. I don't see anyone with a, the hand up or waving furiously. Just one quick us. thing. The yep. connection between those two uh, sections, the two red sections of the trail, um, I, I'm i glad that there's a little bit of attention on this because uh, actually that's one of the hardest places to ride my bike. 
uh, is to continue from one end of the trail to the other. Uh, oftentimes I'm coming from the Cove, uh, sorry, from the uh, Cove Warehouse side to uh, um, south towards the rest of the trail facing the DMV. Um, and because they're offset, you uh, have to sort of slow down uh, quite a bit to try to uh, turn right a little bit and then slide back in to the route, which is kind of a challenge. Um, so what I usually do is just ride to the left of both of these fence posts uh, on the left on both sides of the street and ride over the grass to get back uh, down to the gravel. Um, I don't know if there's any chance that you can create a spur on the right side near uh, the barn so that uh, by the time you reach the end of, by the time you reach uh, Hanmer Road, uh, it's sort of turned enough that you can just sort of continue straight through that opening. Um, but it, that's just sort of one usability challenge uh, that may not be as apparent um, uh, if you haven't ridden in it. So when you're riding, are you riding from Main Street back through here and then going to the trail or vice versa? Uh, the, it's the opposite uh, because there's the, it's a grassy area, um, but there's actually some bike racks uh, near the, um, near the museum there. Um, so, so people and I uh, tend to ride on that grassy section south on that trail, on that red spur there that you have. Um, and then we'll continue uh, through Hanmer Road to access the gravel trail um, and then to continue from there. So it's that connection right where Hanmer Road is. Yeah, uh, where those two connect uh, or don't connect. Uh, that's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, that's where the gaps in the guide reel are, which is why they were aligned that way. I mean, we can't, we could <clears throat> align them so they are across from each other if you think there's a benefit to that, make it easier to cross. Yeah, you don't have to sort of re-articulate the entire uh, section maybe, but just if it was like three or four feet, uh, you know, towards the end of that, just before you hit Hanmer Road, maybe it would be enough of a curve there or something uh, that you would be able to just sort of slip right through. Um, but I know it's kind of a challenge because it's a sheer hill by that point. Um, and so, if, you know, if this poses too much of an issue with design, that could really be, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be included, um, but that, that is a really uh, challenging section. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, probably the biggest challenge with this is this is all floodplain, so we need to um, we need to go for permits and ensure that we're not you know filling into the floodplain. So it's got to be graded out properly. But that's something sure. we're looking at trying to. Reopen. I think the sidewalk is, is a pretty important project, and I don't want to create a headache with this other part um, since I think sort of pedestrian mobility here is probably what's least uh, addressed right now. So thank you. Hey, uh, Tom, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, just to say that I, I do the same thing on my bike. If you're if you're riding mostly from when you're riding from the warehouse, then across Hamner Road, there's a, it's a very narrow opening in that walkway right now. So a lot of times there will be either people coming the other way or if there's another biker or somebody's walking their dog, I do the same thing. I just hop on the grass over I think it's in that area where you have that new stone dust trail um, kind of, and, and then there's a park bench and just kind of a ride around the park bench, just so uh, I can, I, you avoid that very narrow opening um, uh, for, you know, that's currently there. So I don't think it's a major issue either. I just wanted to say that I do the same thing. Okay. Okay. Mary, you got your hand up. Uh, yes. So I, I, I tend to ride in the opposite direction that Tom and Adam are describing, but it's the same issue. Um, it's a combination of the posts are too close together. And then also when you're coming from, um, I guess the ball fields is the way to describe it towards the, towards the cove itself on the path. It's also got a weird kind of pitch and it's just easier to go on the grass and there's actually a catch basin in the, in Hamner Road, and I kind of ride around near that. I come up on an angle over the grass, sort of in the area where the proposed stone dress trail is, and cross Hamner Road and avoid all those posts because they're just too close together and nerve-wracking. 
with the topography and, and pedestrian traffic to make that crossover. Um, I, I would not recommend installing um, uh, someone made a comment about putting in you know, more stone dust. Uh, you guys barely maintain stone dust on the trail in other places. I don't wanna add more to it. And that just increased maintenance costs to the town. I, I would make a comment, again, not beyond the scope of this particular presentation, but on the path that runs from the cove up to um, the Wells house. Uh, as you take the turn, um, that sort of 90 degree turn uh, around the ball fields, that washes out all the time, as does another section in the straightaway. And I don't know whether you guys can think about from a long-term maintenance cost reduction point, uh, putting in some culverts so that you're not constantly replacing that. It's also a little tricky on your bike. Sometimes you've got too much and sometimes too little gravel. Um, and I'm always afraid I'm gonna oversteer as I'm, especially as I'm taking that 90 degree turn. Um, again, I know it's outside the scope of this. I'm just throwing it out there because if you're not riding around in this area, you wouldn't be aware of these issues. Thank you. And again, I, I, otherwise I think this plan looks good. I like the idea of connecting through the sidewalk on Hamner. Thanks. Great. With regard to the, uh, the trail. So when we applied this last round of, uh, for funding, we had we, two applications. One was Great Meadow Road phase one. The other one was to reconstruct the trail from um, from State Street all the way to this location and put in drainage because of the washouts and things of that nature. It just, it just wasn't selected as a project. So we're aware of it. Um, we do have a, you know, a plan for it. And that's something that we could uh, utilize maybe for a future funding application. Okay. Anyone else on this one? Okay. Seeing none. Derek, was that your last or I oh, got, no. you got another? No, this is the last slide. Okay, I'm not, I'm not pushing you. Push it. Yeah, yeah. People are probably getting tired as I am. <laughs> um, okay, so this is main, just Main and Center Street. This was part of our original application as well. Um, the big, the biggest issue we have out here is drainage. <clears throat> if you've been out there, the, there's low points here near the ramps that puddle water or eats up the pavement. When we repaved Center Street, we stopped a little bit short because we needed to do a project to reconstruct it. So. With this, we are looking at replacing the ramps at Center Street. Um, it's not shown here, but we it's very flat, but we can get some drainage down through here, maybe to a new catch basin structure in this area that would tie into the drainage system. And a crosswalk on the uh, north is to the right here, so it's on the south side of the intersection. Um, originally, I believe on the application, we were crossing a, on the north side. Um, however, we were thinking maybe the south side would makes sense because we have a driveway entrance here. Um, this would remain no parking. So for visibility looking to the south and um, I tend to when possible, I like to put it where the right turn is. So traffic here, you know, can easily see someone in the crosswalk. They're not making, they're not looking right and making a left into a crosswalk. E either one is, is not a big difference, but in this one, we were looking to move it to the other side of the intersection for those reasons. So it's not highlighted, there'd be a new ramp on this side and we take out the um, small slate walk that goes to what we put in. It was a temporary crosswalk a, few, a couple years ago, knowing we had this project coming, but just in the interim, it's a skewed crosswalk right now. So we're gonna straighten that out. Rob, you got your hand up. And this might be a weird question, but Derek, do you, do you ever do like a second crosswalk? I mean, would you have an intersection like that that it would basically look like a like a four-way intersection, only you know, a crosswalk on both sides of the where we were going to put it, and keep the same one that's there. So you have people who come down Center Street and people who go back, like or people going to the Charles, are walking down on um, you know down Main on the side where the, the uh, Academy is, have to cross over and then have to cross back over. So it's like two crosses instead of coming down and just going one. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it depends on where they're located. I, yeah, I mean, our next crosswalk, I guess, on the other side of the fire station that we talked about earlier. Also, just as an, I mean, the, the, the most effective traffic common going on, I think, in my opinion, the street is like the bollard that's on in that crosswalk. I mean, people yeah. from the firehouse gain their momentum, the bus and everything, but they're that that 
crosswalk forces them to stop, like to slow down and stop. And I'm just thinking a second crosswalk might give that intersection the feeling of like a real traffic con where like there's people, it's because it, it, it is such a, you know, that Charles is creating a new foot traffic pattern. People are walking to that location and all around there. So I just was curious whether they ever, did they ever, you ever put two of them, you know, it's like two opportunities to cross. I mean, usually, yes, when you have a three-way stop, um, being that main is a through, uh, you can, not necessarily. I think, uh, you know, UConn students did a presentation a few weeks back of, uh, for Knott Street, I think the trail crossing there where we were, that was one of the things that was considered, um, you know, it's something we could consider. It's, it's generally, like I said, on a through lane, you would just have one. If it makes more sense on the other side, it could be on the other side. I guess, you know, your point with the Charles traffic, you know, maybe that's the foot traffic's a little different. Um, I think we were trying to minimize the impact on parking too mm -hmm. with this. Being that I said, you know, this is going to be naturally kind of a no parking area. We'd sign it, but then it would, it would allow for parking here up because you're not stepping out into traffic. At least if you have parking on this side, you've got some time until you get to the center of the road when you're coming across the other traffic. We can move it if we were on this side with it or with both, then we're kind of eliminating a longer stretch of parking, which is just part of that overall traffic study, trying to trying to not impact parking too much, but also provide adequate sight lines. Okay, uh, Adam, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to add. Uh, I know that the parking situation is definitely a challenge. Uh, as a primarily a cyclist who comes through here, I mean, I walk all the time too. Uh, since I live pretty close. Uh, it's definitely a bit of a challenge with all the cars there. And I know that that's not something that can necessarily be solved because you know street parking is important. But uh, as uh, places go, uh, I don't know that this is the section that you know, necessarily it's most vital to have car parking. Uh, I feel like when I'm riding through there sometimes, uh, people park in front of uh, that uh, Weathersfield Historical Society building, which I guess kind of makes sense as it's an establishment, but you're also parking in what feels like the center of an intersection. Um, and so sort of stemming from what Robert said, I know that, uh, you know, from the, from the design perspective about having three uh, passenger, uh, sorry, three crosswalks may not make sense as sort of what the intention is when you're designing them, but, uh, maybe that would help sort of, uh, you know, address these other issue areas that we're looking to, to fix, uh, sort of like having another place to walk, generally speaking, and then also uh, reducing a little bit more of that parking there that makes it a challenge for drivers to, to go through that intersection, but then also uh, cyclists. Uh, I don't know the regulation. So if it's taking out like seven cars, I could see that that would really be a problem. But if it's just like uh, two or three spots worth of spaces that need to be removed pursuant to that regulation, I, that's something that I, I would be okay with. Okay, well, that's something we can look at. I'll discuss it with Peter. I, I know in this particular area, we have a lot of parking problems, uh, people parking in no parking zones on Center Street or parking off the street in front of the neighbor's houses causing us to get complaints. Um, but that's something we, we could look at and see how that kind of fits in with the with the overall plan down here. Thank you. Okay. Just looking through the list. Anyone else? Okay. I don't see anyone. Okay. That was it for me. That was it for me. All right. I think we've just um, we go back to. Um, Sharing the screen back to the slides. I think we just got a couple. Um, a couple more. So just um, to wrap this up, uh, as we go forward, this is our anticipated schedule, knock on wood, that we can uh, stick to this. So uh, after this meeting, we will take uh, the various comments under advisement with the intent of trying to finalize the plans uh, and get this project um, in a bid format. Uh, we have to have the DOT involved in that, so they'll have to review that. So hopefully uh, by July, 
uh, we will um, be at that point. I see Rob, you got your hand raised. Well, let me just get through this slide and then uh, we'll go back to you. We'll go out to bid in um, August, uh, hopefully select, select a contractor in September and then be in a position to selectively start some of the projects uh, in, the, in the fall. And then depending upon the individual projects, wrap them up uh, sometime uh, maybe in late spring of next year. And uh, obviously, given uh, our limited budget and some of the improvements that were discussed um, tonight, but also discussed by ourselves internally, we're going to take a creative look at how potentially we can piggyback on some uh, existing town funds, um, some resources that we may have to stretch our dollars uh, a little further. The other thing that uh, we didn't uh, cover is we will have some funding for some bicycle parking. Um, so we have been talking to businesses and looking at different locations where we can add uh, some additional bicycle parking uh, throughout the, the project area. We're not in a position yet to uh, get into some of those locations, um, but uh, there will be funding hopefully for um, additional bicycle parking. We've seen some of the uh, historic Weathersfield um, hoop bicycle racks popping popping up here and there. So we'll continue along those lines with, with that bicycle parking. Um, Rob, you had you had something you wanted to say? It was about bicycle parking, so, so never uh, mind. Yep, I, we forgot about, we didn't, since we didn't have locations, we didn't put a slide yeah. uh, together. So thanks, thanks for bringing that up. Jill, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, um, Peter, I think I mentioned to you that the Historical Society applied for a grant to, um, better grade the side lawn and deal with that path through the woods that connects, you know, it's WHS property, but it connects Lucky Lou's and it connects um, the Butterf Williams house. And that I have that plan. And I just thought, you know, if this meeting wasn't already an hour over, you know, it would be fun to just add those ideas. And so I'd like to just share those with you and Derek, just for a a look see as you're incorporating some of these other ideas and okay. i'll, I'll um, send that to you okay the other option is uh maybe at our next bicycle and pedestrian committee meeting we can also uh share those with, with sure some other yeah folks who would be interested if you're okay with us doing that i am okay. it's you know it's um they're just designs they're not nothing's final and we haven't received the the award but we do have the drawings so i think they could add the visuals could add to the discussion. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, I think uh, with that, we're we are wrapped up and, and ready to go. We sorry that we uh, kept you here so uh, late, but uh, obviously there's a lot of details to discuss, and we do appreciate uh, the the creative uh, comments um, and questions that you raised. I think many of them are very valid, and uh, Derek and I will uh, go through our notes and. Uh, see what we can do to uh, incorporate as, as much of that as we can, given the uh, limitations uh, on our budget and kind of the priorities that we're, we're trying to uh, solve throughout uh, old, old Weathersfield. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it out one more time if anyone has anything uh, to add before we wrap it up, but uh, we're at that point now where we can let you get on with your evening. Okay. I don't see anything. I appreciate you all uh, joining us tonight. And uh, once again, thank you uh, for your input. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you, Peter day. and Derek. Thanks, guys.